Here's a hot take. In less than a decade, most of the lottery picks that are drafted will not come from the NCAA. Maybe even sooner. But how's it possible that such a powerful and prestigious institution as college basketball has managed its future so poorly? While the entire basketball world continued to evolve, the NCAAs remained stuck in an unchanging rut for decades. 50 years ago, the system was much the same, and there's come a point where there may be no going back. Let me explain. In many cases, it doesn't even take a huge investment to stand up to it. In fact, one man was able, in 2018, to destabilize the entire college basketball world. Because in the end, basketball is an entertainment business, and that's not a figure of speech. The NBA, like the NFL, is registered as such. But college basketballs ended up being left completely on the sidelines. Something that's worrisome, since it's traditionally considered the best way to prepare for the rise to professional basketball. From being criticized by some basketball legends and future Hall of Famers, to losing some of the best prospects of the last classes, to being dismantled by a crazy idea of a father who just wanted to take his kids to the NBA, this is the story of the inevitable decline of the NCAA. LeVar Ball was a pioneer in many ways. His crazy mind served as a target for fans and media outlets for years and years. And in part, he'd purposely brought it on himself. I mean, just watch this. No. But you don't really think no. you can beat MJ. Stop it. The one-on-one, -on -one, I would kill him in my heyday. True, his basketball knowledge may not have been that high, and it's also true that he tried his hardest to overvalue his kids as much as possible. But I mean, they are his sons. Can you really blame him? But if one thing is true, it's that the man was a damn marketing genius. His decisions, off the court, were mostly brilliant. Not just for the big baller brand, either. In 2017, LeVar had an idea that would change prep basketball forever. The Junior Basketball Association was a crazy project from a man who wanted to create a circuit that would allow his kids to shine, kind of inflate their stats, and improve their spot in the mock drafts. A league composed of eight teams in four cities, Atlanta, Brooklyn, Dallas, and Los Angeles, which was the first real alternative to the NCAA born in the United States. And the first change that brought this branch was, of course, the most important. Do you know what NIL stands for? This acronym's been the biggest cause of the NCAA's collapse. Name, image, and likeness. The college's biggest problem has always been that they didn't pay the players the old-fashioned ways in stone-cold cash. Something that makes sense in an educational environment, as this path is supposed to be by and for the players. But what the universities have not publicly advertised is that they're actually profiting from these student-athletes. Not only do the rules prohibit players from being paid at this level, but they can't even accept gifts. Well, the JBA was different. Big Baller Brand took it upon themselves to pay between $3,000 and $10,000 a month to the players, in addition to sponsoring absolutely every participant in the league. And seeing how little trouble the circuit had recruiting 80 players to participate in the league, people began to realize that creating alternatives to the NCAA wasn't as utopian as they thought. Just a few months later in late 2018, the G League, an NBA affiliate league, began planning how to execute this idea on a larger scale. Thus was born G League Ignite, a team created in 2020 that provided a new alternative to college basketball, offering salaries to prospects of up to half a million dollars. That's right, a five-star recruit could spend at least a year in the NCAA without receiving anything, or he could make the jump to the G League where they could play against professional players, in addition to collecting a paycheck that would make him a millionaire in just two years. What do you think is the more attractive option to the best young talents? Jalen Green, who was the best high school prospect in the country that season, didn't have to think about it much. The only drawback here is that the Ignite only offers a few spots during each season. And while it's true that they're going to hoard some of the best prospects every year, there's still a ton of potential left in a market that was barely tapped. That's how Overtime Elite was born, which at the moment is by far the biggest threat to the NCAA. Founded by Dan Porter and Zach Wiener, OTE launched its league just three seasons ago in 2021. The first rule was clear. Players should be paid a minimum contract of $100,000 per year, a figure that'll increase further with bonuses and shares in a brand that's in full expansion. The Academy not only offers sports training with top coaches, but also a great educational offer. With OTE, there was simply no adaptation process. From its inaugural season, it had some of the best elite prospects from all over the country. In fact, in its first season, Overtime was able to get the Thompson Twins, Amen and Asar, drafted in the top five of the 2023 draft. Additionally, the program's just a clear improvement over the NCAA. The Academy prepares athletes for professional basketball, 
and not to give their best performance for just one season, as seen with the best prospects in Division 1. And this long-term vision continues to convince the best athletes, not just in the United States, but around the world. Taking advantage of the opportunity that all these alternatives have created, even the professional leagues have taken action. It's no secret going overseas for that year after high school has been an option that, though few players have taken, has always been there. Brandon Jennings in Italy or Emmanuel Moutier in China are two pioneering examples. And since then, there have been even more professional leagues that have created specialized settings to help these prospects succeed. The best example is the NBL, which is the first year of the Australian Professional League. The country's always been a great basketball breeding ground exporting elite talent, but in 2018, with the arrival of Josh Giddy in senior basketball, the league created the NBL Next Stars program, a program that allows players to prepare for the draft while playing professional basketball and collecting a good payday. So far, there's been as many as eight players who've participated in the Next Stars and ended up being drafted into the NBA, including huge names like LaMelo Ball. Another viable alternative to the NCAA that's proven to be very successful. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of the video? That thing about most of the prospects they draft a decade from now will not come from the NCAA? Well, let's take a look at the mocks for the upcoming 2024 draft in June. The favorite to lead his class right now is Zachary Risaché, a wing who's currently playing in the French Professional League, not from the NCAA program. The second pick is Alexander Saar, a French player who's currently in the NBL Next Stars program, so now we're over 2. Projected to go third overall is Nikola Topic, a combo guard who's playing in the Serbian Professional League, still not from the NCAA. It's not until number 4 we finally get an NCAA player, Cody Williams, who's currently playing in Colorado. So now we're 1 for 4, but now projected at number 5 is Matas Buzelis, another wing who's currently playing for the G League team Ignite. That makes 1 out of 5. Yeah, it's crazy. Now I can hear you already, and I know it's true that the rest of the lottery picks are more dominated by Division 1 players, but Ignite's also managed to place Ron Holland in the lottery spots of the mock drafts for next June as well. Looking at next year's mocks, in 2025, we see players like Ignite's Dink Pate, Overtime's Carter Knox, and South Sudan's NBA Academy's Kaman Malawash in the top 14. That's not counting, of course, the international players and not taking into account that some of the remaining players may still accept offers from these specialized programs. See where I'm going? It may be too late for the NCAA to save themselves, but if they want to stand a chance, they need to implement a number of changes starting now. The first is to play players, both for their play and their NIL. To be fair, they've started the process to implement the latter, but both of them are something vital. We're talking about players who are at least 18 years old. They're not kids, they're practically adults who have to endure the enormous pressure and who literally give up their lives for basketball, prioritizing it over anything else with strict schedules, and who are only paid with the showcase that college basketball offers them. The second is to change the methods of play. The NCAA is so different from the NBA that it seems like two different sports. A lot of coaches try to get the most out of prospects without caring, on many occasions, about their long-term development post-college. Many times this puts them in positions that they won't occupy when they become professionals. This is a huge problem. America's always been a true capitalist world. That's a fact. Everyone's trying to maximize their profits in order to secure a better future. While it's true the NCAA provides a chance for these young athletes to obtain higher education, many of them will choose the professional athlete route and this factor is becoming more and more important in these kinds of decisions. 40 years ago, players completed the college cycle even if they were ready for the NBA. Today, that's unthinkable. If a prospect's ready to make the jump and knows that they can get a good spot in the draft, they're almost certainly going to do it. But while society's been changing, the NCAA has not. One thing is certain, though. The NCAA finally decided to introduce in 2023 different proposals for boosting student-athlete NIL protections, a step forward to solve its serious problems, which still has few beneficiaries, a step in the right direction that Division I basketball has to go to equalize the conditions of these alternatives that are achieving better and better results. And it remains true that the NCAA could radically change the spectrum with a series of decisions, but that's something that still seems a long way off. Honestly, the battle? may already be lost.